Welcome back to another video. On the workbench today we have got a Hitachi lithium ion battery charger for a cordless drill. If you look on the bottom there, there's the details. The UC18YKSL Hitachi. Input to 30 to 240 volts because we're in South Africa. None of this American 110 volts. It's got a 3.15 amp fuse and output is 14.4 to 14.8, sorry 14.4 to 18 volts at 2 amps. The person that asked me to take a look at this basically said it's dead. So let's take a look. Should just be star screws for the feet. Of course he didn't give me the batteries to check with it, he just gave me the charger. So we're just going to do basic checking for anything obvious. Anything more we're going to need a battery from him. Okay, there's all the screws out. Okay, so it's a little, small little switch mode just jobby. Nothing obvious on this side. We have got the fuse over here. The small little black thing is the fuse, 3.15 amps. We'll test that just now. First let's pop board underneath. Okay, you can see the board did get a bit hot over here, but that's right in this section by those large diode and resistor, so that should all be okay. Maybe I should have plugged it in first. Oh, let's see that 3.15 amp fuse. Okay, so the live comes in here, and it goes across those that fuse terminal. So. Continuity tester. Yes, we do have continuity. Let's check from the South African old style two pin plug. Got continuity there. Okay, so we do have continuity. I wonder if this thing actually does anything without the lighting. Looks like a really basic circuit. Okay, there's two, two drive chips over there. Okay, so I've plugged it in and we don't have any battery on there. I don't know if it uses battery ID. Negative, positive, LSTLD, C+. Let's see on this um, bulk capacitor if we've got any voltage. That's strange. If you look up at the tester, that's off of the screen there. All capacitors got zero volts on it. Okay. That's Okay, they got a bridge rectifier here. They got a diode bridge over there. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so your live and your neutral come in over here. Don't know if you can see this properly. And then they go through this common mode choke. So let's check if the common mode choke has continuity. We hear the beep, then we've got continuity. OK, 
Okay, that's out of the common mode choke, we got continuity through. This side here, I'm pushing the probes in hard. And there's no continuity on that side of the common mode choke. Could it be that the common mode choke has burnt out? Or had a wire broken off? Let's take a look. Okay, so there's our common mode choke. That's good. And this other one. This other wire I can't see. So I think I have to unsolder the common mode choke. And just see what's going on. Now, it doesn't look like it's burns, but definitely no continuity. Sorry, definitely if I test there and I'm pushing the probes hard, no continuity. So let me give it a few seconds for my soldering iron to heat up. I'll find the rest of my soldering equipment and then we will um, pull that choke and see what this looks like. of solder. Theoretically we could just bridge out the common mode choke but it is good for suppression and that's so. Uh, How do you know a South African YouTuber? Got hardy does in the background. Someone's giving me a hard time. So here's our common mode choke. Out. Let me bring you in closer. Don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. It's very difficult to do this looking in the camera. It's my light, light I'm fine. I'm gonna let it shine. So if you look here, you can see this wire here. It's not attached to that pin, uh, that pin anymore. This wire is attached. That wire is attached, that wire is attached. So it looks like this wire has, this wire here has just snapped off this pin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo this one half a turn and then just wrap it around and then it should be good to go. Okay, so we unwrap it. Oh, I'm gonna solder it on to give it a cont continuity again, okay? So I just need to pull the slack. And then feed it back under there. Of course this does change the difference in impedance between the two sides but I don't think that'll matter too much just for a bit of suppression. It's not like this guy is trying to watch TV while he's charging his battery drill. Okay so there is our wire that's going to go onto that button again. Okay so there I've pulled it through. Let me give it a bit of a cleaning. Just to remove the enamel. Could also burn with the lighter but then I just once I've scraped it with a knife just go once or twice around the neck. Okay then we're gonna solder it. will also burn off a bit more of the coating on the wire. Okay, so now let's do the beep beep. Now these are the lousiest tester probes ever, but you can hear there. 
and the side. Yeah, so it looks like we've got continuity. Let's pop the common mode choke back in now. choke is in place so I'm gonna just tack one of the feet. I'm actually gonna tack opposite corners right you'll see there's a reason for that there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the choke hard against the board while I heat up the legs and you see it I mean now it's got mechanical rigid support against the board. Decent amount of solder. Don't worry about those inside pads because that's if you use it in a smaller one by chuck. Always remove any solder blocks from the workbench. Let's put it back in this box for now. Let's see if anything happens when I plug it on. Ah, there you go. We have got a flashing light. I don't know what the flashing light means when it flashes a few times like that, but it just means it's getting power. It's getting power, but it doesn't see a battery. So I think this one is actually okay. Obviously, because it's got a flashing light, it means the control is getting power, which means the reservoir capacitor is getting power. So that one should be okay. So let's close them up. So, basically what happened here, the fuse is still good, just the wire broke off on that common mode choke, which stops it from passing the power through the bridge rectifier and then the capacitor, which runs the switch mode circuitry, which runs the rest of the thing. So one small little strand like that, render the whole charger useless. But now that we're rendering this whole charger useful again, just by fixing that strand. And one more screw, and then we do a final plug-in. And then we give it back to the guy, because it should be working. I don't see more than one problem if it was just a mechanical break like that. Okay, so let's plug it in again, should get a flash. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that looks about good. It might be flashing like that, if you look there, because it thinks that the battery is full because it's not drawing any load or something. I'm not too sure how this charger's brain works. But anyway, I think that one's done. If you liked it, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe and share to your friends if you enjoyed it. I hope you're coming back for more. Thanks, guys.